Hi guys, welcome to this week's Ask Dara. So I'm going to answer the questions that I got last week before I went away to Mexico. And unfortunately, um, I only can find two of them. I know there were a couple of others on my Facebook page for questions, but unfortunately I can't seem to go that far back. So if I'm not answering your question this week and you remember that you asked me a question last week, please resubmit and uh, I will get to it. But for now I have two that I, uh, I do remember. So I will answer them for you today. So the first one is, how do you keep your mind on the big picture when you've had a bout of going off plan? So this is specifically, you know, it's not just one little slip. It's not just you had a little bit extra when you um, went to a family birthday party or something like that. But it's when that becomes a day or two or three days of being off plan. And as we know, momentum works both ways. And when you get enough momentum moving in the wrong direction, it gets even harder and harder to pull yourself back out of that. So the best thing to do is try to step back and look at the big picture. It can be really easy. And I actually find it um, not as good because the way my body responds to things is if I do have a night where I am not supposed to have an extra meal or like a cheat meal, and I do, then the next morning, you know, right away it's lifting up my my shirt in the in the mirror and looking and checking, and and your body doesn't respond that quickly. Just like it doesn't respond that quickly to one day of eating well, one day of poor eating, it's also not going to respond that quickly. But this sometimes works against me, and I know other people that I know as well where you'll look in the mirror and be like, oh, okay, so it's fine, I can still see my abs or whatever it is, I, um, everything's okay, and then that sort of feeds the downward momentum in the wrong direction, and you start to think, well, if that didn't make a difference, then this doesn't make a difference either, and then you're two or three days, and you're continuing to slip more and more off plan, and that is when I find that it starts to show up. It takes a couple of days, two to three days, before the, the poor eating starts to show up on your body, and it will. So one of the things that can help you with that staying focused on the big picture and not letting yourself get into that downward spiral is knowing in your head that there's a lag for what you're doing and when it's going to show up on your body. Just like we know that it takes time and sometimes we can be changing our diet, preparing for a show, preparing for a photo shoot and not seeing any change at all for weeks and weeks and weeks and then it's finally there, or we're, we're not seeing the change, but we can see it in pictures, or we're not seeing it in the mirror, but it's happening. The same thing works in reverse, and you need to know that up here so that you don't let yourself get into that spiral by thinking, oh, this doesn't make a difference, this doesn't make a difference. It does matter, everything matters, and the more you can know that here and believe it here, the more you're gonna be able to pull yourself out of those, the downward spiral, the momentum in the wrong direction and pull yourself back in the right direction. And there's a couple different things that I've found that have helped with that. In addition to having that mindset of knowing that it does make a difference. And one of those things is forcing yourself to take one step in the right direction. And even when you don't want to. So your mind might be saying it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, but you know an action that you can do that will take you back in the right direction, whether that's doing a workout, whether that's eating a healthy meal, whether that's drinking a whole liter of water. Something that is a habit that you regularly do when you are on plan, just do it. And expect that you're not gonna wanna do it. And if you actually don't wanna do it and you force yourself to do it, that is an exercise in discipline. And that is going to help you turn things around and start the momentum back in the right direction. So sometimes you have to force yourself to act before you feel like it and the act of forcing yourself to perform a good habit can help change your feelings into wanting to get back on plan again. And another thing I found is a, a, an effective strategy to help myself get back on plan is reflecting. Reflecting on a previous time where something like this happened and thinking about what I was able to do to get myself out of it at that point. 
and then doing that. So thinking about, okay, the last time I was in a situation like this, I, I, left, I left the room, I left the condo and I went out for a walk. And by removing myself from the situation and the environment, that was, I was able to help myself sort of reset. So if you're in a specific environment that is not conducive to getting yourself back on plan, you need to remove yourself from that environment, even if it's just going out for a walk or doing something to change, change the room that you're in, change something. Go find a quiet room where you can sit and you can meditate for a few minutes. Just remove yourself from the environment and give yourself a chance to disconnect from that feeling and um, come back to a place of calm where you can make informed decisions. Okay, so the second question was, just how important is sleep? Now, this is a question that I could preach forever on. Um, but I won't, <laughs> I'll just say that sleep is, no, no matter how important you think sleep is, it's actually even more important than that. When we sleep is when our body is repairing and um, when you're sick, that's when it's healing. And only when you're sleeping, not just resting, resting is good, but it's actually the process of sleep where there's a number of different metabolical and um, hormonal things that are going on within your body to heal muscle tissue from workouts and if you're trying to lose body fat the whole process of breaking down the body fat from within our stores happens um, during deep sleep during REM sleep at night so there's a number of things that happen when you're actually sleeping that just do not happen during the day so from a personal standpoint um, I'll share a story with you about actually just how important sleep was in my life when I was in my accident in 2009, I was on a city bus and we got rear-ended by another bus. So long story short, I ended up with a concussion and the concussion led to insomnia and I had to go to a sleep clinic. So I went to a sleep clinic where they attach all the electrodes in your hair and all over your body and they stick something up your nose and then they tell you to lay quietly and sleep. So I went to the sleep clinic and felt like I didn't sleep at all, felt like I laid there and was awake all night, just like I had been feeling with my insomnia. My insomnia affected me where I felt like I couldn't fall asleep, and when I did, I would wake up in the middle of the night, and every morning I woke up like I hadn't slept at all. So the results from this sleep clinic were that I actually slept for seven hours. I slept the whole time I was there, but I never once entered REM sleep, the deep sleep. And this was why I wasn't healing, this was why I was depressed, this was why I constantly felt like I was never sleeping enough because my body was not actually entering the restorative stage of sleep. So I went into a whole um, treatment plan to be able to help me to sleep and actually was on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication uh, to help me get back into proper sleep. But once I was able to actually start sleeping again, I started to get better and I started to heal and that made a world of difference and now today as soon as I don't get enough sleep I notice it immediately I start to feel sick if I'm trying to lean out for a show or lean out for a photo shoot I won't lose weight it just the scale won't budge I've more on more than one occasion when I've been working for weeks and weeks and weeks and nothing really seems to happen and I've been 100% on with my diet I haven't had any extras I've been getting my workouts in and nothing seems to be changing. One night I had a, I, I slept for 11 hours. I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go to bed and I can sleep in the next morning, I'm gonna sleep till I wake up. And I did, and the scale dropped two pounds. So whatever it was that I was doing was right, but I wasn't giving my body time to actually process those results and therefore it was holding on to things. So when I'm, when we're sick, or when you're trying to lose weight, or when you're trying to um, run a marathon, you're training for something, anytime when you are putting extra stress on your body, you actually need more sleep. So everybody's a little bit different. They say seven to eight hours a night. I recommend that everybody has at least a week or two where you try to go to bed at the exact same time every night. And if you can, don't set an alarm and sleep as long as you need to, because you're going to have a sleep debt that your body's going to try to make up for and eventually you're going to start waking up without the alarm 
once you have a few days in a row where you've woken up without the alarm, that is the perfect amount of sleep for you. Maybe it's seven hours, maybe it's eight, maybe it's eight and a half, maybe it's nine, maybe it's seven and a half. Whatever that is, you know that that is your ideal amount of sleep and you can adjust your schedule to make sure that you're always getting that same amount of sleep. Now that being said, if you're sick, like I mentioned, or if you're injured, or if you're preparing for a photo shoot or trying to lose weight, your body needs more sleep because you're putting more physical pressure on your body and asking it to do more than just the common um, rejuvenation of just a normal day. So I actually find that when I'm sick, I aim for nine to 10 hours of sleep a night. And when I'm preparing for a show, same thing, aim for nine to 10 hours. And on a weekend when I can even sleep for longer, I will let myself sleep until I wake up. And there are times when I sleep for 12 hours and I wake up refreshed. It's not that, you know, when you're lazy and you sleep in too late and then you still feel tired. It's no, I sleep until I feel awake and I pop awake and I feel great. And it's exactly the amount of sleep that I needed. So you need to listen to your body in terms of how much sleep you need. And it takes a little trial and error at first. And then even as you go, you need to adjust and some days you're gonna need more sleep than others. So if you change nothing else, when you're trying to make a lifestyle change and start with sleep. So don't worry about if you don't exercise yet, don't worry about it. If you don't know how to make a change to your diet yet, don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything else but making sure you're getting enough sleep and focus on that for a month and see if everything else doesn't get easier. Because if you sleep, it affects everything else. So I'm going to put um, some links in the description for specific articles on sleep because I could talk about it forever, but if you want a little extra reading and a, some scientific reading to back up what I'm saying that how important sleep actually is, I'll put some links to some good articles that you can read in the description. And yeah, that's it for this week, guys. So send me your questions for next week. And like I said, if I missed your question, please submit again. I can't seem to go back that far to find them. And we will see you guys next week. Bye.